Okay, thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending. I'm pretty sure we've got uh, most of our attendees on now. Uh, for those who are a little late, we will have a recording of this anyway on our website. So uh, we'll send that link out to you uh, within 24 hours of finishing the webinar. So yeah, thank you very much. Hey, I'm Jim from PSI Brand. Uh, some of you I may have met before, others maybe not. So i yeah, just like to welcome on anyone who's new to PSI Brand and say hello to all of those that I've already met for. So welcome to our 2020 webinar series. This is the third webinar, Perfect Your Post Mold Offering. Uh, in our first webinar, uh, we did a bit of a broad overview of uh, PSI Brand and our offerings. And uh, the second one was all about in molds, and this one here is all about post molds. So hopefully there's some really nice takeaways uh, for you uh, in this webinar. So uh, really what I'm wanting to cover in the next 20 minutes is, is where post mold graphics fit your offering. And uh, just share the secrets of the Puerto Yards pro project. So that's a, a local company uh, which was applying and still is supplying uh, post molds onto a highly textured HDPE surface. Also going to provide a live demonstration uh, onto a plastic box in front of me, uh, including uh, another a highly textured part as well. Uh, just share some hacks and quick tips with you. And uh, also want to explain the post mold popular features. So we'll go through these and just take note of any that you might be missing out on uh, that you could perhaps take advantage of in the near future. And of course, if you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat and we'll look forward to answering them at the end uh, before we close off. So something else I will mention at this point is if you want to change the view settings uh, within Zoom, is just go up to the top there and click on view settings. You might want to select side by side mode. And what that gives you the ability to do is, is make uh, the presentation smaller and make the video larger if you want to check out any of the interesting product that we've got uh, in behind us here. So let's move on. I have a few slides to share before we move into the live part of the demonstration, which will hopefully be the most interesting for you. So when to use post mold or decals. Now let's get my light working. So when to use post mold or decals? Well, the fact is nothing sticks to plastic due to the low surface energy. And well, I've just put in there uh, a couple of examples of polyethylene, uh, the dyne level in polyethylene being 31 compared to stainless steel at 46. So while a decal will stick nicely to steel, you can see why it has trouble sticking to polyethylene. Now this might be already obvious to you. What I did want to point out also is that when you flame treat a polyethylene, it lifts the dyne level right up. So that is used in a lot of instances for printing onto plastics. Uh, when we flame plastics, or when we recommend flame plastics for our graphics, we're literally oxidizing the surface. So you're opening up the pores of the plastic and then burnishing the graphic into those pores and as the plastic returns to its normal, uh, encapsulates and fuses to the graphic on the surface. So We'll run through and show you how that works shortly. And just to cover, I guess, the options, so I'd like to share this sheet here, and I appreciate there's a lot of text, but this is a comparison chart you'll find on our website as well uh, as to what PSI Brand can do to help you with different options. On the left-hand side, we've got the in-mold graphics, uh, starting with the in-mold extreme, uh, which is uh, our latest uh, version of in-mold graphic. Uh, designed for polyethylenes primarily, but also works well with uh, polypropylenes. It is a clear material uh, which has got extremely high flame resistance, UVI built into it. And the in model original is the backbone of our graphics, where we started out and what we've been working with for the last 18 years. Uh, being a base white material, again, has the same peel and stick application. So we're focusing on post mold graphics. Uh, we can look at vinyl decals which stick onto the surface, they're self-adhesive. Uh, we do in fact have a high-tech vinyl uh, which is designed to stick to low surface energy surfaces like plastics. Uh, yes, you can still feel an edge and yes, you can still chip at it. Um, 
So yeah, it's there as an option, but what we want to focus on today is the post-mold graphics. So after mold application, uh, it's applied using a heat and burnishing process. It's recommended for polyethylenes from low density through to high density. Also uh, used on crosslinks, some crosslinks, um, nylons, uh, ABS. So download our spec sheet on that uh, for for a more um, a comprehensive guide on which plastics are going to work on. So they're applied pre-coated with adhesive. Uh, this adhesive is designed to activate once uh, it comes in touch with a heated surface and hold that just simply holds it in place while you run through your burnishing process. So enough on trying to describe that without showing you. We'll move to that later. So I just wanted to share a couple of slides on a unique application where uh, our post-mold graphics are being used. And uh, I believe Ron might from Hussey Singh might be on the call this webinar today. So <clears throat> thank you very much to Hussey Seating in Maine uh, who utilize our post-mold graphic system for uh, giving them a unique point of difference, taking the team uh, motif uh, for whatever college or, or sports team they might be representing and putting it onto a bank of plastic seats. So what you're looking at here is a, a telescopic seating system, which is made out of HDPE. Now, this company tried using vinyl decals uh, in the first instance, um, but understandably they were able to peel off. So <clears throat> turning to PSI brand and using the post mold system, they're able to now fully fuse those graphics to the front of those seats. And you can imagine how much of a grueling uh, this graphic goes through. Perhaps if you've got an excited crowd uh, or someone fidgeting there uh, wanting to chip away at the graphic, um, it's really putting it through its paces. So it just gives you a nice example of you know, where you can use our graphics to make a, a unique point of difference. The next example I just want to share with you is a local company called Landquip. Uh, Landquip are uh, based here in Hawke's Bay, New Zealand, and they manufacture uh, portable sheep yards. So over here in New Zealand, we have a lot of sheep, and uh, this is a portable race. And on the side of that has got some red panels, and that's made from HDPE uh, extruded panel. Now I'm just going to show you a short video clip and talk you through uh, what we did to help them. So you can see them here uh, where the product's been used, has the HDPE panels on the side which is ideal because it saves any muck or dirt sticking to it. And, um, but the challenge they have, of course, is branding uh, a product like this. So I'm just gonna show you a short clip here of how uh, the operator here is heating the surface using an LPG or propane torch, bringing it up and using that steel plate just to concentrate the heat in that area. <clears throat> they bring it up to above 80, more like 100 degrees Celsius. And then he's positioning his graphic in place and trying to apply it nice and flat and smooth without trapping ear bubbles. Of course, challenging being a textured surface. In this instance, he's using a plastic fork to push the parts of the graphic right down into the grooves of the plastic. Uh, I'm gonna do the same application for you shortly using a hair comb. So it's pressing the graphic right down into those crevices in the texture. Once it's transferred off, he then gives another quick burst with the flame just to fully embed the graphic into that HDPE surface. So <clears throat> that's the Landquip uh, demonstration. What I want to run through now is a live demonstration uh, doing the exactly the same graphic as you saw in the Landquip video. Uh, so let me just uh, go to share my camera. Uh, bear with me a moment and We'll be able to show you a bit more about this process. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that now is coming up on your screens as well. So in front of me, I have here medium density uh, polyethylene part. I'm going to apply graphic to this area here, courtesy of uh, Ken's Marine. So quite a large graphic here, I'm going to be applying it over the side of the molding. So what I want to do for a start is just to make sure my product is clean. Uh, I don't have any dirt or grime on it. And if it's been sitting out in your factory or in storage, 
Um, a good, good way to clean is using isopropyl alcohol uh, just to prime the surface. So um, first I'm going to go and inflame it. Uh, I'm going to use in this instance a, a Rypac gas torch with a wide flame adapter, extremely effective for doing large areas. If you're doing a smaller graphic, you might work with something a bit more like this here, which has got a narrower flame, uh, still very, very effective uh, for smaller graphics. What I will mention at this point is do not use heat guns. Uh, so this is an electric heat gun, uh, it does not work. It simply just warms up the surface. It doesn't oxidize it like a flame oil. So please don't use uh, these heat guns. You won't get the desired heat and you won't get a sufficient bond. Right, so once I've heated up the surface, I'm going to test my temperature using this infrared thermometer here. And then, uh, just wait a minute, I'm just gonna check my camera again because it looks like I might've done a, a freeze. Just restart it like that. So, once I've, my temperature is up, I'm going to then apply my graphic to the part. I'm, go, I'm going to be using a squeegee, uh, just a squeegee across the graphics to bring that adhesive into contact with the warm surface and also remove any air bubbles. Then finally, I'm going to buzz across using our burnishing tool. Okay, <clears throat> perfect. So I'm just showing the air burnishing tool here where our little burnishing pads, uh, so one side is a very uh, stippled surface. I'll try and put it up to the camera here. You can see there's a little hard little nylon dimples um, molded, over molded by a soft plastic. So this is used for burnishing the graphics into place. I can simply just place it into the little adapter on this burnishing tool here and that makes the job a lot faster and gives a much better result. Anyway, enough talk. Let's do some demonstrations. So I'll start with my flaming. So I want it to be up around 70 degrees, uh, maybe 70 to 100. So I'm about 75 now, 73. So I'm just going to give that a quick flash uh, before I put my graphics on. All right, after with that, so I'm just exposing the base of the graphic here and then just moving over with my squeegee, just to make sure I haven't trapped any air bubbles. My part is slightly curved into the inside here, so I'm trying to work with that. And I see that I may have trapped one or two air bubbles here, which is, which is ideal because I'm gonna show you how to remove those. All right, now I'm gonna run through my burnishing. I'll just shift this over close to the camera. <laughs> point you can just carefully lift one of the corners and if you see it's it's uh, well stuck down you can then peel it away if part of the graphic comes up while you're peeling this transfer away you can just place it back down again and, just, and give it another burnish all right so <clears throat> what I want to show you now is I have a couple of trapped air bubbles and uh, a couple of them I'm going to expel so I've got one down here I'm just pressing it with my knife and pressing the graphic down gently to expel the air. Another one here, another one here, and that'll completely disappear when we do our final heat. I've got a couple up here. I'm gonna leave one purposely just to show you what happens uh, when we do the final flame, because that's likely to burn or split or even discolor on us. Right, it's done exactly that. So this is the finished graphic on the part. Now what I'm wanting to show you up in this, uh, which is where my finger is here, is we've got a discolored area. And that's the bubble which I failed to uh, pinprick. So that's something you need to look out for uh, when you're applying graphics. Now, 
you might be asking, uh, how do we know that is correctly applied to the part? Well, great question. Uh, when you're doing your first uh, graphic run, set your parameters. So do some testing onto a scrap part and do some adhesion testing. And adhesion testing should be done once the part's fully cooled. So I'm just going to grab a part down here that we applied in a previous time zone. So I've run this webinar uh, twice before today. So this graphic here is fully cooled. And our common test is just to scratch at one edge here. And if you can drag your fingernail across without you know, peeling up the graphic, that's a really good quick test. Uh, the ultimate test is really giving a crosshatch test. So this is by uh, bringing a knife, creating some scores going ops, opposite ways like this here, then getting an aggressive tape and sticking it down onto that area. Okay, so you live, you know, you can give it, you know, five to 10 seconds to activate and then just pulling it off. And if you have any graphic uh, left on your piece of tape, um, and you also notice it come off the plastic as well, uh, that's a really good indication that you've got a good bond. So you don't need to do this every single molding. Uh, this is really just to set your parameters when you're starting out. So with that, I'm going to move into the Lanquit panel. Uh, so this is the HDPE panel, which we saw in the Lanquit video. And uh, as you can see from the camera, it's got a really uh, coarse texture on it. Uh, so I'm going to be flaming the surface um, as I showed previously, then applying, applying the graphic onto it here. Hopefully it comes out looking you know, something like this here, but who knows? Let's give it a crack. So we'll be taking this up to a slightly higher temperature, uh, up to around uh, between 80, 100 degrees Celsius, uh, just to make sure that we have uh, yeah, adequate uh, temperature in there. So uh, let's just get some flame onto it. done a few of these now so kind of know what to look for you get that surface gloss happening and with this plastic it seems to go slightly darker red so I'm using a hair comb here as you can see uh, instead of a plastic fork like they had in their video um, this is just to press the graphic down into all those crevices uh, maybe PSI should develop a tool that is um, is orange and looks more like a hair comb and that might help for some of the highly textured parts that are out there. So concentrating on the edges, moving in. You can see at this point the graphics kind of changing color. And this is from transferring over onto the plastic. So the reason our normal burnishing pads won't work um, as well as this instance is because they struggle to press uh, the graphic down into all those crevices. Admittedly, it takes a bit more work, but the overall result is certainly worth it. Of course, appreciate any feedback that anyone, um, you know, if anyone else out there is is, is achieving something similar on some highly textured parts. I uh, very appreciate any feedback, any comments you might have, um, any tips that you might have that we can share uh, to help help our customers going forward. So I'm really happy with, with the transfer that we've got here. You can notice the uh, transfer is slipping around all over the place and we have it applied to the part. So I'm just going to give that now final flaming. Uh, just to make sure it's fully embedded. Okay, so just a quick flame over it like that. You don't want to concentrate on that area uh, for an extended period uh, because what that might do is burn 
burn the graphic, you might end up discolouring it. So uh, let me just see, make sure my camera's still working. Yes, it is. Let's bring that up uh, so you can have a closer, closer look at it. Uh, so that is uh, simply all there is to it. Again, appreciate any feedback, uh, any comments you might have of other techniques that you might be using, uh, which you're willing to share. <clears throat> all right, let me move back to the last couple of slides uh, before we move on to our question answer uh, section. All right, got through that bit without burning the building down is always a big plus. All right, let me just cover the features, <clears throat> the features of the post mold graphics. So uh, yeah, first up, heat activated adhesive. So our graphics feature an adhesive uh, which activates on heat. So there's no spray adhesives at all. Uh, and that adhesive simply, as I mentioned before, is to hold the graphic in place while we run through that burnishing process. It is not to glue it to the part. Um, if it was to glue it to the part, you would end up seeing it just flaking off again. And that's what you might see if you're not using enough heat uh, in um, pre or post stages, is while the graphic appears to be stuck to the part, it's just the adhesive holding it there. Uh, it's not actually using that proper plastic bond. Opaque, as you saw, uh, white on a red part, uh, does not turn pink. You end up with a really nice sharp look, looking brand. Uh, shelf life, uh, absolutely unlimited. Uh, that is a claim. Now be reasonable here, don't keep them under your desk uh, or in your glove box. You know, keep them in a shelf um, within the packaging supplied. Uh, that could be in your workshop, in your office, and you should see those graphics lasting for as long as you need them. Colors, full color process. Uh, so just want to touch on that as you would have seen in the uh, Hussey in the Hussey example, uh, they're using uh, a lot of multiple colors. I just want to share another project as well, which we've done recently, which is a, a tic-tac-toe. Uh, project where we actually printed a full life grizzly bear. Uh, so you can see his head, you can see the torso, uh, followed by the feet. Um, so really the, uh, the opportunities are unlimited for colors. Track and trace. So we do a lot of barcoding, QR codes, serial numbers, are really popular for after mold application. MOQs or minimum order quantities. So we have a one sheet minimum and one sheet is, is literally a thousand millimeters by uh, 700 millimeters. Whatever you can fit on that sheet, that is our minimum. Uh, so go beat that. Now in our lead time, we promise a 10 days anywhere uh, using our rush service that, that truly is the fa fastest. Uh, please put us to the test. More than happy to uh, rise to the challenge. Uh, competitive. So ask for a free setup cost on your first order. As attendees to this webinar, uh, we are offering a free setup cost on, on your next order. So take advantage of that. And customize. Think of an application now where you might have uh, either your product or your client's product where you can add a brand, add value and upsell uh, give them that extra, you know, piece that, you know, perhaps I'm missing out on. And last but not least is uh, our graphics are all safe. Both the in-mold and, and the post-mold are all 100% uh, FDA compliant. <clears throat> so just in conclusion and some takeaway points uh, for you here is, is plastic is plain, be seen and be heard. Now more than ever, it could not be more important to have your products seen in such a challenging and crowded marketplace. Uh, there's no excuse to have product going out the door with substandard branding. Uh, be seen and be heard. Uh, talk to us. Take advantage of some of those points we've talked about. Get trained and certified. So we've got a new training portal we launched uh, just prior to COVID in March where you can go online and you can, anyone can run through these different modules, get trained and certified on our different graphic processes. Uh, furthermore, uh, we're offering masterclasses face-to-face uh, -face using a platform like this here, uh, where we send your company welcome packs and whoever attends can literally touch and apply graphics 
and we're in a 60 to 90 minute session, uh, what we call our masterclass, and go out of that fully confident in applying graphics. Down so download our PCPA and troubleshoot guide, troubleshoot guide and spec sheets under the resource section. Uh, identify the features that you're missing out on. So I've just touched on the popular features. Uh, hopefully there's some there that you may not have seen before. If you're already using them, great. Uh, but identify which ones you're missing out on. Let us know where we can help you. And for more, of course, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, where we're constantly updating with new tips and tricks. So with that, we'll go to our question and answer se session uh, before we close, uh, just to see if there's any, uh, any questions that have come up, which I can see uh, there's a couple here in the chat. Uh, so let me just scroll through and have a look. What kind of artwork do you require? Uh, great question. Uh, for quoting, uh, all we need is a picture. Uh, artwork for uh, literally turning your dream into reality is uh, vector artwork. So typically these are supplied um, Illustrator, uh, AI, EPS, PDF, or even Corel Draw uh, are all fine. But again, if you don't have that and appreciate, uh, it's sometimes really hard to get hold of that artwork, um, send us what you got. We've got a bunch of trained, uh, fully trained artists here that can vectorize it for you. So I trust that helps. Let's see another one. Might have popped in here. The IPA for cleaning, is there one grade that works better, i.e. 70%, 91%, 99%? Uh, really, you can start off, you don't have to use IPA. <clears throat> you could use a mold release uh, remover as well. Uh, really, uh, you know, you could start off with your uh, less aggressive grade uh, for cleaning. It's really just to uh, clean the plastics more than anything. Um, it, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's not like a chemical reaction that we're looking for to, you know, prep or prime the plastic. It's just to make sure we've got a really nice clean surface. So a um, short answer to that question is it shouldn't matter which type of IPA you're using. Trust that helps. Um, just make sure there's no further. There's one more popped in. Are the graphics RAH3 and REACH -E -E compliant? Yes, 100% so. Uh, also CPSIA compliant. Uh, we've had our graphics tested and they meet all these requirements. So I trust it helps. They can be used in uh, a wide range of different food grade and uh, children applications. So um, absolutely. And that goes with both uh, the in mold and the post mold uh, graphics. Well, that looks about it. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. I trust there's been some, uh, this has been beneficial for you. Uh, it's designed for you. Uh, please, uh, you know, feel free to join our next webinar. Our next webinar is going to be around the auxiliary products such as the surface enhancers and the, uh, the new paint system. Uh, so trust it's going to be worthwhile for you as well. Uh, please leave us some feedback. We will be sending the recording. And uh, again, have a great day. Appreciate your time.